Hello and welcome to GMBN Tech Ask. Don't forget to use hashtag AskGMBNTech down in the comments and we'll try and answer your question as soon as we can. Uh, so let's jump straight in, shall we? I've got a question here from Adam Harkin who says, how do I know what bearings I need for a rear wheel? Are they generic or brand specific? Uh, my wheel is a Sunring or Duroc SD 37, 27.5 inch. Um, <clears throat> no, they're not brand specific really and they're not generic either. Um, they can be all manner of widths and it is a bit of a headache uh, knowing what you need. Um, technically, just so you know, uh, bearings are measured in three ways and that would be the sort of width of them or the depth in which they go into a wheel. Uh, also the, the sort of outer diameter of them, so how big they are from the outside uh, circumference. And then the inside as well, which is basically the hole in the middle, which needs to be the right size, otherwise your axle or your quick release won't go through the middle in your wheel either. So those are the three measurements and you're gonna need something like this that is gonna be super accurate um, because there are uh, really small tolerances and you can't really get them wrong. Now the easiest way if you can't dismantle your wheel yourself too easily to measure all of these things, um, then you want to take out or get it disassembled enough to see that there's a code on your bearings and that should tell you what you would need to replace them with, although there's some variation still. So I did a bit of digging and your Sung Ringle Durox, um, they apparently use a dual uh, 6902 bearing. So you will see probably 6902 written on the bearing of your wheels if you can get to them. Um, and that means dual, you'll need two of them, one in each side. Um, and basically a 6902 will have a certain depth, width and center, but you might want to still check those measurements when you go to buy them. Um, and also some of the bearings you can get um, uh, labeled max sometimes. They're not as freely moving as um, the sort of non-max and you want the freely moving ones for your wheels um, so that they, well, freely move. Um, but really, if you're not confident in replacing these, I would just go to a bike shop and ask them specifically which ones you need. If you're buying from them, they should happily take them out um, and measure them properly for you. And just save yourself the hassle of buying three sets of something that costs £10 uh, when you can just get it measured up and buy it for you know, 10 or £11 from a bike shop. So that's my advice. Next up, we've got Jasmine Levin who says, um, I thought that derailleur hangers got introduced back in the day to break in a crash instead of the derailleur or frame. Doesn't the new Axis prototype design get rid of this feature and make crashes more expensive? Yeah, I mean, you are absolutely correct. A derailleur hanger was meant to be the sort of soft bit so that if you were to hit your derailleur, it would snap instead of breaking your derailleur or breaking your frame. With the new axis, it looks like it is clamping directly uh, around the frame, around the axle. Um, which looks like it's doing away with a UDH, um, the universal derailleur hanger. So you're right, this does seem like an expensive move, but all I've got to say is this is a prototype. We don't know anything about it yet. We have no idea if that new sandwich um, will still break away in a similar way to a UDH or a hanger and it can just be replaced. We don't know anything yet. Um, it is potential that this new axis, because it brings it higher without the hanger, it brings it higher towards the frame and more inbound and more away from rocks, it's possible that SRAM will argue that it is less susceptible to being knocked and they are very sturdy derailers anyway, so we might not even need one anymore but I think it's up for debate and it's gonna divide people no matter what they come out with. So Adam Harkin says, I want to try running narrower bars. Uh, is there an easy way to try this without cutting my existing bars? Yeah, just move everything inwards. <laughs> so um, if you've got uh, lock-on grips like this, you're not gonna be able to move those in 
on your bars, but if you can swap them out temporarily for something like this with a bar end plug, then you're likely to be able to move them in slightly um, and then move your brakes and your levers in and then just basically run your hands inwards more um, by say a centimeter I would go max um, at either end and just see if you like it and then that will tell you whether you do or not. Um, so yeah, just experiment. Um, Ty Tankard says, I have a creaking, clicking sound coming from my bottom bracket sort of area. It comes uh, when my left pedal is about the 10 o'clock position to about six o'clock. So that's the downstroke, I'm guessing. Um, seems to be much more noticeable when pedaling at lower cadence, high torque. Um, I've got a XT bottom bracket. What will this likely, what would be the culprit? Um, I don't know without looking at it, but if it's if your cranks are tight, so that's one of the first things I would check is make sure your cranks are done up. Uh, that clicking noise could be that they've sort of loosened. So get hold of the cranks and give them a real twist and see if they rattle or anything because they might need tightening up. If everything is good, um, the usual culprit of a clicking noise is that it's a bottom bracket wearing out. Basically, especially if it's press fit, it will get dry and it will start to creak within the frame and click. Um, and it just needs replacing. Um, sometimes a badly installed one will even click and creak um, and reinstalling it won't help. You need to sort of replace it. Um, so yeah, that's my guess at the culprit, but I think you need to do a bit of digging around the area. Uh, so Diamond says, uh, planning to go mullet from 180 to 27.5 setup. I've read that I need to drop 10 millimeters of fork travel to compensate for the larger wheel size. So you're trying to bring it back down, I assume. Uh, looking at the RockShox Lyric 29ers axle to crown length, it appears that I would need to go down to 160 millimeter. Um, as it has the same axle to crown as the existing 180 that you have. Um, is it okay for me to go 170 or do I need to consider other measurements and go to the 160? Um, yeah, look, axle to crown is probably really important, especially when it comes to your frame. Um, they will have, the manufacturers will set out a spec. It'll have a maximum axle to crown length. Um, so. For anyone who doesn't know, that's axle to crown here. Now, if you raise that, then you're slackening all your head angles, you're changing your geometry, you're hiring the bottom bracket, which I know you're trying to negate, and I know some people might like that, but also consider the amount of force that that head tube now gets with its slacker angle, um, if it's longer travel, your frame might not be built with that. It, it might not. Um, it might not survive a really hard crash or a, a jump, for example. So manufacturers will tell you what your max, maximum axle to crown length is. So check that out before you start deciding uh, what length of forks to change. Um, also, you're doing this to create a mullet out of a 27.5. And even if you're happy with all those geometry changes, I, I've just got to ask, like, is it worth it? Like, if you have to put a 160 fork on your on your bike to get a 29er wheel, is that really better than having the 170, you know, 27.5 or even the 180 if your frame can go up to it? Um, I'd maybe go on some demo days and see what you think about that setup, setup first because it's quite an expensive change getting the forks and the wheels um, or maybe even borrowing a friends if you can. But first point of call is contact your manufacturer and see what your frame can actually take first. So Mike Dolman says, I have an aggressive hardtail with 140 millimeter Marzocchi bombers. I rode Leogang with it and after riding there, the front of the bike creaks when I bunny hop and pull up on the front brake. Uh, I already changed the headset, the bearings and the cups, but it keeps creaking. Do you have any idea what's wrong? 
Um, you need to check for some cracks around your frame, first of all. It's, it's a hard tail and it's had a hard life in Lear Gang, so fair play to you for riding that. Um, but yeah, you want to make sure if it's a carbon uh, frame that there's nothing untoward going on that you've not noticed. Um, the next thing is, I would say, possibly your steerer tube on your forks. You know, especially on a hardtail, forks take an absolute pounding um, and you can actually damage those. Um, sorry, the steerers here. These can actually go, they can start to, you know, lose their, um, their weld or they might even crack or fatigue. I would say if you've got a vise, take your forks out, get the steerer tube safely uh, in a vise and really lean on them and see if you can replicate that creaky clicking sound. If they click and they creak, um, then you might need a new steerer tube. Um, that is a replaceable thing, um, so I would say maybe head down to, if you don't have advice, head down to your bike shop to get them looked at, but in particular a suspension service centre will do this as a standard, will check those over and see if anything is wrong with them. They probably need a good service after a week in Lear Gang anyway, so go and give them a bit of love. Tori Sheridan says, if you had to choose one, what's the first carbon part you would buy for your trail bike uh, for overall best bang for the buck? I mean, that's a loaded question, Tori. Um, it depends what you want and it depends on your budget as well. Um, if you want overall weight saving, for example, then a carbon frame could lose you two pounds, maybe a kilo on a frame. Um, but you know, that could add a grand so is that extra thousand pounds worth losing two pounds for you um, when you could just buy a lighter set of aluminium wheels, for example? Um, speaking of wheels, if you were to go for carbon, you don't necessarily get lightness, but if your goal is acceleration or, you know, firm cornering and agility, then it might be more bang for your buck to spend on wheels. However, I would say carbon wheels are arguably so expensive these days that they, they can be, you know, three grand, which could be the price of a frame. So maybe not the most bang for buck. Uh, it's, it's really debatable depending on what you want. Um, and I would say, what's wrong with aluminium? <laughs> um, I'm, I am a big fan of carbon. I personally would go into a frame and have aluminium parts, but that's because I like comfort. Um, I guess you would have to have a real motive for wanting uh, stiffer bars and carbon bars and things like that. So, um, yeah, I don't know. It depends what your goal is, I guess. Sorry, Tori, not a definitive answer. Um, and then finally, I've got Lars Forderson who says, I have a 180 mil fork and I don't feel I'm ever using the full travel. What do I need to do so I can have the support needed for bike park jumps, but off the top softness? <clears throat> do I need lower PSI with more tokens, higher PSI with less tokens, compression? Um, yeah, probably you're going to have to mix um, and experiment with all of those things, I would say. Um, for me, I like initial suppleness as well with good support. So um, I run my forks really soft um, with tokens so that it ramps up for any kind of jumps. But what I will say is I set my sag properly. My air is set for my body weight, no matter what. Um, when you say um, softer, it doesn't mean less air. Um, it means you start to play around with your compression um, settings if you've got any um, and just try and make them softer with the settings that you've got. Um, so less compression damping um, makes it softer. Um, I would also maybe check that you're setting up your sag properly. So I do it with a ruler. I don't go off PSI charts um, because they can be uh, just a guesstimate or a, a starting point. Um, you, if you want to run 30% sag, for example, then make sure you're working out what 30% of your um, overall stanchion travel is and then set your sag there. Um, and then 
yeah, that's a good starting point. Um, you say you're not getting all of your travel. That could be because you've got too much air in there. Maybe you want to run 30% sag rather than you may be running 25, for example. Try and do that. Um, you might have too much air in, but also you might just have a really firm damper. You might just have too much compression dampening, like wound on. Um, you just need to play with some stuff. But also, um, don't underestimate what a good service will do for a set of forks. They can absolutely change them. Do check out some of our lower leg service videos that will show you how to change the oil in your forks so that they're more supple. Um, and you might find that you want to run a bit more air and you might want to add tokens after you've done that because they feel so good. Um, honestly, you're going to have to play around with it. There's no set answer. Sorry, Lars. Um, but that's all we've got time for this week. So thanks for joining me. Uh, do hit subscribe if you're new to the channel and do hit the notification button if you want to be notified every time we put out one of our videos. Thanks for watching.